In this module, we will be giving an overview to complex adaptive systems. We will firstly define what we mean by this term, before briefly covering the main topics in this area as we talk about adaptation, the dynamics of cooperation and competition, self-organization, and emergence. Finally, we will look at the complex interplay between the micro and macro patterns of organization that is a core feature to these systems. A complex adaptive system is a special class of complex system that has the capacity for adaptation. Thus, like all complex systems, they consist of many elements, what are called agents. With these agents interacting in a nonlinear fashion, creating a network of connections within which agents are acting and reacting to each other's behavior. Through adaptation, Agents have the capacity to synchronize their states or activities with other agents locally. Out of these local interactions, the system can self-organize with the emergence of globally coherent patterns of organization developing. This macro-scale organization then feeds back to the micro-level, as the system has to perform selection upon the agents based upon their contribution to the whole system's functioning and thus there develops a complex dynamic between the bottom-up motives of the individual agents and the top-down macro-scale system of organization, both of which are often driven by different agendas but are ultimately interdependent. It is this interaction between bottom-up differentiation of agents with different agendas going in different directions and top-down integration in order to maintain the global pattern of organization that creates the core dynamic of complexity within these systems. This is a lot of very dense information, so we will now try to flesh it out in greater detail through examples. There are many examples of complex adaptive systems, from ant colonies to financial markets, to the human immune system, to democracies and all types of ecosystems, but we will start on the micro level by talking about the agents and adaptation. An agent is an actor that has the capacity to adapt their state, meaning that given some change within their environment, they can, in response, adjust their own state. So, say our agent is a player within a sports game. Well, if we throw a ball to the person, he or she can catch that ball. They are able to do this because they have what is called a regulatory or control system. A control system of this kind consists of a sensor, controller, and an actuator. The person is using their optical sense to input information to their brain, the controller, that is then sending out a response to their muscles, the actuator. And through this process, they can adjust to generate the appropriate response to this change in their environment. And it is the same process through which a bird in an ecosystem or a trader within a market is receiving information, processing it, and generating a response. Typically, these agents can only intercept and process a limited amount of local information. Like a snail following a trail on the ground, it does not have a global vision of the whole terrain around it, and it must simply respond to the local information available to it. With this capacity of adaptation, agents have some degree of autonomy through which they can choose to synchronize or desynchronize their state with that of other agents within their local environment. We might also call this cooperation or competition. They typically do this based upon the costs and payoffs for choosing one of either option, and this cost-benefit ratio varies depending on the scenario or what we might call the game they are engaged in with other agents. Some scenarios, such as playing chess, have very low incentives for cooperation while favoring competition. These are called zero-sum games, while other scenarios have a much lower cost and a higher payoff for cooperation, such as driving your car on the correct side of the road. These different types of games create attractors, that result in default positions for agents to cooperate or compete. Added to this are feedback loops, where what one agent does influences what another agent chooses to do. If you owned a certain stock, and upon hearing some negative news about that company, all of your fellow traders around you started selling it, this would create a positive feedback loop, attracting you to also sell. 
and if you did that, would again amplify the positive feedback, placing a stronger attraction on others to also do likewise. In such a fashion, some phenomena can cascade through a population synchronizing their states rapidly. This process previously described is a form of what is called self-organization. From the interaction of the individual agents arises some kind of global pattern which typically could not have been predicted from the behavior of the agents in isolation. For example, in the brain, consciousness is an emergent phenomenon which comes from the interaction between the brain cells, thus the global property of consciousness results from the aggregate behavior of individual elements. Within this macro-scale system that emerges, control and regulation is typically distributed out. There is no master neuron or set of neurons that tell the whole brain what to do. No one is in control, and no one in the system has complete information of it. This distributed nature to complex adaptive systems may make them very robust where the system can adapt to some large disturbance. The internet might be an example of this. Dynamically updated routing tables keep track of how long it takes to send information along any path on the network. If there is a failure in one part of the network, packets are rerouted through another channel. Control over the flow of IP packets is distributed out over many different routers and service providers with a large amount of redundancy, making it robust to failure. But equally complex adaptive systems can self-organize into a critical state where feedback loops can work to amplify some small perturbation into a large systemic effect as witnessed during financial crises. This emergent macro-scale system of organization, then, operates within some environment, whether we're talking about a herd of animals within an ecosystem, the human body, a democracy, or a corporation within a market. The whole macro-system is periodically subject to perturbations and change within that environment. In order for it to optimize its state, there must be some mechanism for performing selection upon the agents within the system. Those creatures within an ecosystem that can best respond to the environment are replicated. Those employees that have proven their value to the company will be promoted, while others will be fired. Those products that best fulfill the demand are selected by the consumer, while others go by the wayside. The result being that the whole system evolves to exhibit more of the desired characteristics as they become more prevalent with the system. In this way, this global pattern of organization will feed back to affect the agents on the local level, both enabling them and constraining them. It enables them as it is a mechanism for them to coordinate their activities and thus receive the benefits from forming part of a complex organization in the form of security, shared knowledge, technology, and so on but it will also constrain them as following regulations and being subject to some form of selection is part of maintaining this global organization. But of course, agents have their own agendas that may or may not be aligned with those of the whole system. And this is where the real complexity comes into the dynamic, as there is now a core tension between the micro and macro levels. The system as a whole that is, how it appears within its environment, will be primarily defined by how this core tension is resolved. That is to say, is the system driven by the interests of the agents at the expense of the whole? Or, by the interests of the whole at the expense of the interests of the individuals? Or, has it managed to find some resolution to this conflict? If we take an example of an economy, we can have a free market economy, which is driven primarily by the interest of the agents in a bottom-up fashion, or we might have a communist economy driven by a top-down dynamic at the expense of individual motives, or we may have some economic system that manages to integrate the two. In this module, we have tried to present an overview to complex adaptive systems. We have discussed some of their core dynamics by looking at the capacity of adaptation, how feedback loops and attractors can work to synchronize elements. We have talked about how self-organization can give rise to the emergence of distributed global patterns of organization. Lastly, 
We saw how through the process of evolution, this macro system of organization can feed back to affect the agents and how a new dynamic emerges between the motives of the individual agents on the micro level and this new macro level form of organization.